and welcome. The notorious debate between comic book personalities Peter David and Todd McFarlane begins with statements made by the Image Comic founders when the company was first being established. Through his opinion column, But I Digress, Peter David addressed issues he perceived within Image Comics, and, more specifically, with the statements made by some of the founders. Now, some context may be helpful. In 1993, the comic book market was practically a license to print money. Sales were astounding. The two mainstream publishers, Marvel and DC, were saturating the market with anything and everything. It was a period where quantity trumped quality. It was also a period where artwork was far, far more important than the writing. Record sales and record profits highlighted the unfair gap of equity between the company and the creative talent. While some artists could command a reasonably high page rate and there was some profit sharing, the vast percentage of the profit went to the publishing company. And at the end of the day, in order to get paid, they also had to assign all rights to their material to the publishing company. So while an artist or writer could make a decent living, they could be making so much more. With this knowledge, seven artists joined together and formed Image Comics. Jim Lee and Todd McFarlane probably being the two most important people. Although Eric Larson and Rob Liefeld were also very popular and their presence solidified the foundation of this publishing venture. When Image Comics launched, each title was an unqualified success and most of the founders became millionaires almost overnight. With the benefit of hindsight, this outcome was a foregone conclusion. It just required one bold move, instigated by Todd McFarlane and Eric Larson, to make it a reality. However, despite their success, the Image founders didn't get a lot of respect. Creators' rights and fair compensation were a hot topic of the era, but none of the founders were perceived as advocates for either. This lack of respect was further compounded by the rebellious image they projected and the suggestion they were bold pioneers of some variety. Whether correct or incorrect, this attitude was quite grating and somewhat condescending to most other industry professionals. While not stated explicitly, one could infer that Image Comics was generally seen as an opportunistic venture. The quality of the material being published essentially supported that opinion. It was all style, hardly any substance, and it degraded the medium into a purely capitalistic venture. And, accidentally, it exposed the dirty secret of the industry. The creative talent were not getting paid their due. With the success and the ego it reinforced, some of the founders had no problem telling the press how great Image was and how it would change the comic book industry. In a nutshell, there was a lot of bragging and chest-thumping. It was not a good look and some took exception to the public persona projected by Image and its founders. One such person was columnist and Marvel Comics writer Peter David. In turn, one of the Image founders, Todd McFarlane, took exception to Peter David's exceptions. For the record, Peter David is a solid writer with an extensive list of credits. He is, quite simply, a craftsman. His work isn't challenging or difficult to grasp, but his stories, plots, and characters are well presented and professional. As a columnist, his opinions are usually well thought out and at least somewhat objective. He has a viewpoint he makes very clear when either writing or speaking. In the early 90s, when his profile was the highest, he was an important voice discussing the comic book industry. Todd McFarlane is a salesman. Not a businessman, but a salesman that knows how to draw. He excels in selling himself and what he brings to the table. And he does deliver. Whether what he delivers is satisfying or not is another issue. His artwork is stylistic and somewhat coherent, but it contains no substance. His writing is an easy target for criticism. It's simply atrocious. Regardless, his unshakable belief in himself is a skill or a personality trait that can't be dismissed. It is effective. Gene Simmons of KISS has built a very long, profitable career following this principle. And one has to respect the hustle. But at the end of the day, that's what it is. A hustle. And this is what Peter David was trying to expose. The hypocrisy inherent in the foundation of Image Comics. It was opportunistic and exploitive. The overall lie that Image perpetuated was that they had set out to change the industry while the fact of the matter being they had set out to exploit their own popularity and make tons of cash. David also objected to the image people basically doing what they had done at Marvel and DC. He found the image projected by Image Comics to be false, or, at the very least, utterly disingenuous. 
At least that's the impression one gets from his But I Digress column, published on February 21st, 1992. Added into this mix was an anonymous, inflammatory letter sent to the publisher of But I Digress. The letter stated writers, such as Peter David, were unnecessary and that artists should write their own material. This anonymous opinion matched McFarlane's opinion, and he would go on the record stating writers were unnecessary in the Comics Journal later in 1992. However, McFarlane denied being the author of the anonymous letter. For the record, the anonymous letter writer was Eric Larson. He owned up to it in a response to a Peter David letter that ran in issue number 20 of Savage Dragon. For the better part of a year, McFarlane and David would directly and indirectly reference one another through articles and letters to the editor. At some point, McFarlane challenged David's credibility and objectivity, suggesting David was fabricating lies about Image Comics and the founders. Side note. Unfortunately, there is no online archive of Comic Buyer's Guide, and an archive of But I Digress is rather incomplete, so being able to accurately document this exchange is quite difficult. The word of the participants is all that's available to provide support. End of side note. In order to air their grievances and to settle these ongoing issues once and for all, both McFarlane and David agreed to a debate at the Philadelphia Comic Fest convention in October of 1993. The title of the debate was Image Comics and Todd McFarlane Have They Received Fair Treatment in the Media? Originally, the debate was to be moderated by Don Thompson, the editor of Comic Buyer's Guide. However, he had to cancel due to illness. At McFarlane's suggestion, David's collaborator on Saxon Violence, George Perez, filled the moderator position. The available videos of the event dispel an urban legend surrounding this debate. It's been reported that Todd McFarlane took the stage surrounded by Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders while playing the theme from Rocky. Nothing like this occurs. McFarlane is dressed up like a prize fighter, which is an outfit he changed into shortly after arriving at the venue. At the beginning, he looks sullen, trying to project the image of someone mentally preparing to get into the ring. However, it comes off as ridiculous. And this tough guy jock image becomes an embarrassment during David's opening statement. David isn't treating this like a circus or a frivolous affair. He's come prepared, and he's ready to intellectually fight. McFarlane is there for the spectacle, to self-promote, and to be the cool kid in the room. It's a contrast that's hard not to notice. The debate begins with opening statements from both participants. Peter David goes first and immediately sets the tone for the remaining debate. He begins by addressing the premise of the debate and stating that, no, Image hasn't been fairly treated by the media. In fact, they've been treated in an overly positive manner. So by David's redefinition of the word, this is unfair because it's not even-handed. This is semantics, and transparently so. The implication, which McFarlane seemed not to notice, is David suggesting Image Comics are pure crap, but the media treats their product like solid gold. It's a good beginning for David. It's not an overly strong argument, but it does what it needs to do. It puts McFarlane on the defensive. Furthermore, it dispels any notion McFarlane might have that David was going to participate in the goofy spectacle McFarlane had planned. Todd McFarlane's opening statement is a wandering piece without any apparent theme. Basically, he states that the Todd McFarlane in interviews is a ghost personality. He's just goofing around. He says crazy stuff because that's what he does. In fact, McFarlane is surprised anyone takes that Todd McFarlane seriously. He thought everyone would see through the facade and find it amusing. The real McFarlane is multifaceted, a man who is different things to different people. This is an obvious, well, let's call it a rationalization, or an excuse. Because if it isn't either, then McFarlane lacks a self-awareness that is profound. The first question, posed by McFarlane to David, is, How do you get your information as media, and do you contact the people you write about? Rightfully, David points out he's an opinion columnist, not a journalist. Therefore, he's not obligated to seek out clarity from the people he writes about. The second question, posed by David to McFarlane, is, Please tell us your definition of a lie, as opposed to an opinion you don't agree with. Give one example of each, from But I Digress to illustrate. Context. Prior to this debate, McFarlane had alleged that David was twisting the statements of the image founders and spreading lies about the company. End of context. McFarlane is unable to answer this question. 
He simply states he didn't leave Marvel and Start Image because of money. This is a theme McFarlane had established for himself prior to this debate. Image Comics is not about the money. It's about being happy. The third question posed by McFarlane to David is, what changes in image would satisfy you? David's response is, simply, makes sense. Think about what you say before you say it. Later he would elaborate and say image's collective, arrogant attitude is quite annoying, and it's something they may want to tone down. The fourth question, posed by David to McFarlane, is, please explain what you expected from the non-founder titles in terms of quality and sales. Context. There were many titles, such as Wildstar by Jerry Ordway and Shaman's Tears by Mike Grell, that were unceremoniously dropped by Image. The question implies that sales were the deciding factor, despite McFarlane stating sales were irrelevant to any publishing decisions. End of context. McFarlane talks around the answer, avoiding specifics, but he does provide something resembling an answer. The non-founder books were expected to be on time and meet certain sales goals. The rules for non-founders don't apply to McFarlane and the other founders, all of whom were notoriously late, because, well, they were the bosses. The non-founder books were there to fill in the spaces in the schedule, so there was always an image product on the store shelves. If they were unable to deliver, they were let go. The fifth question, posed by McFarlane to David, is, what is wrong with the writing of Todd McFarlane and with Spawn in general? David suggests that McFarlane do some reading and learn about the craft of writing. The sixth question, posed by David to McFarlane, is, how do you claim the moral high ground in your landmark column about respect? Please explain how the treatment of freelancers by image is appreciably superior to that of Marvel. Context. The landmark column David references is McFarlane's recent column in Wizard No. 28. In that column, McFarlane alleged that John Byrne and Peter David were colluding due to their mutual disrespect for Image Comics. End of context. McFarlane's answer, which has to be distilled from a rambling anecdote about himself, is that no one at Image messes with someone else's creative vision. With the questions over, the debate moves into the closing arguments. David goes first. He states that if his series, Saxon Violence, which was running late at the time, had been an image book, it would have been dropped. However, Marvel supports the project and is willing to wait for it to be done properly. He then suggests, image demands respect, despite being arrogant and contradictory, while not giving the respect they appear to cherish. McFarlane's closing argument is to state that Image Comics has changed the industry. He defends Image by quoting Terry Stewart, the then president of Marvel Comics, who allegedly said to McFarlane and the other Image founders, quote, Comic books are an entertainment business, and this is how it's always been. We will exploit you, and we will always exploit you. Unquote. He then makes a very poorly chosen analogy to illustrate that he and the other Image founders didn't accept the status quo. They are rebels. They became the change they wanted to see. Overall, the debate is best summed up like this. David is direct and makes his points clearly. McFarlane talks around the questions posed, and he does his level best to avoid discussing the filthy business of the industry. While the panel of judges found in favor of David winning the debate, it wasn't much of a victory, because, in the end, it was a ridiculous waste of time that accomplished nothing. In a manner of speaking, David's opinion and approach exemplified a common attitude towards Image Comics. That is, the Image founders were arrogant, self-promoting opportunists who wouldn't admit they took advantage of their high profile to make a lot of money. In the same respect, McFarlane exemplified the collective reputation of Image. They were madcap, rebellious creators who loved the medium. They would be doing what they do even if they weren't profoundly wealthy. There is one point to address in Peter David's argument, and it's a point that is exceptionally flawed. That point being, if Image Comics was not doing anything substantially different than Marvel or DC, then why bother? This question dismisses creators' rights and the benefits one receives from them, and there is no argument one can give that voids a creator's right to owning and profiting from their creation. This was something the Image founders were never ever going to receive at either Marvel or DC. Furthermore, according to David, the publishing companies will treat a creator fairly. But fair is a tricky term. It's also a sliding scale. The fair treatment a creator receives is directly proportionate to their market viability. It's negotiable, which makes it distinctly unfair. 
For example, the fairness Alan Moore receives is not the same fairness someone like, say, Peter David receives. More to the point, the publishing company gets to decide what is fair, not the creator. In part, David was defending the system. He was defending the institution established by Marvel and DC. Furthermore, he was suggesting that Image Comics wasn't fundamentally different than the big two. In fact, they may be worse when one considers the treatment of freelancers. In the end, this debate is an interesting historical time capsule. Whether right or wrong, or some point in between, Image has carried the burden of being the prime example of what was wrong with the comic book industry at that time. It was shallow, low in quality, and, ultimately, worthless and disposable. This perception reduced the medium to the status of a product, not an artistic pursuit. And the reason Image bears this burden is because they were the flashiest and the loudest. Or, to borrow a phrase from King Lear, they made a lot of noise that signified nothing. And for this, they were rewarded, much to the chagrin of everyone else. At its core, this was the theme of the debate. It wasn't whether Image or Todd McFarlane were treated fairly by the media. It was whether the attention they received was earned fairly, or whether it was manufactured and controlled. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. If you would like to go a step further, click Join and select the option most suitable for you. Any and all support is greatly appreciated. Thank you. That's it for today. Like, share, subscribe, and comment, and I will talk at you later. Until next time.